someone helpfully pointed out a significant sign error uh, that I made in part 15, and then it carries over into part 16 as well. Um, and it has to do, well, the main, the big sign error I made was just forgetting how to do the scalar, the Minkowski scalar product. Um, just thinking too closely about the analogy with um, a Euclidean geometry. But it, in fixing it, I realized that there's something else I should say about scalar projections. Um, and so here's the setup we have. We have a vector u, and we're trying to project, project it onto w, which is 1 comma v, and then also onto z, which is v comma 1, to get these numbers ux prime and ut prime. And um, to re be really careful about that, I have to go back to projections one more time. We had um, this formula for the projected vector, and that really is uh, exactly the same. Let's say we project it onto w. That is exactly the same in Euclidean and Minkowski, because it didn't use anything uh, about the positive definiteness, didn't use a sign. But then before when we were doing projections, I'm going to switch to black here. Uh, we noted the magnitude of P was, uh, I'm going to take the absolute value of this scalar. And so we get the absolute value of this on top. And then when we take the magnitude of this and um, the absolute value of this, it all cancels down to be uh, just one power of the magnitude. And that's a positive number, and this is supposed to be positive. Trick, trick is, though, there's one other quantity we want. This is neither of those quantities. It's not, a, it's not the vector projection, because it's supposed to be a scalar. But it's not the magnitude, because it actually is supposed to have sign information. If u, for example, was over here, I'm supposed to get a negative projection. It's supposed to be going in the, in the negative of w. So we really want to look at, um, be a little more careful, we want to take p, this vector here, this is p, and we want to say it's equal to what quantity times a unit vector in the w direction. Okay, and so it's going to be uw over the scalar product of w with w, and then I want it to be times a unit vector in the w direction. Okay, so w, to make that a unit vector, we definitely divide it by its magnitude. Okay, and so then we're going to have to multiply by the magnitude. And you might think, well, isn't that just going to give me the same thing as here? Well, be careful, though, because this is not just the square of this guy in all cases. Okay, well, that's a w, by the way. Okay, so this case 1. In this case, here, w is space-like. So we actually do have to do it in two cases, unfortunately. W is space-like, then this scalar product is greater than 0. So it is the magnitude squared. And so I just get this, basically this quantity without the absolute values on top. So I just get that it's, um, let me just re replace it in place here. You just get the magnitude down here. And so it's this unit vector times this, and so this is the component. So that's going to be our ux, um, ux prime here. And that means I only made one error in that computation. Let me scooch it in up here. And so uh, I just made the silly error of just not actually using the Minkowski scalar product. It's um, the scalar product of u, which is ux comma ut with one v, is ux minus v ut. And then you do divide it by the magnitude of w, and that is square root of 1 minus v squared. That's a positive quantity. That's correct. OK, so that's the, the correct version of that. And notice, all that it amounted to is actually just changing the sign of v. And I'll say a, a little bit more about why it just amounted to that. OK, the trickier one is ut prime. OK, so that's case two. Here, um, I'm going to be doing it with z instead of w. So I'll just change the letter. But the main thing is that that's time-like. OK. And so the projection, the projected vector, is still going to be a similar formula, but with z in here. And I'm going to bring back the correct formula with this guy. OK, times, we, need, we make z into a unit vector. And we want to express the projected vector here. So this is the new projected vector p as some scalar times the unit vector in the direction of z. So then I just have to 
make it right. I'm just multiplying, dividing by the magnitude of z. But now this guy's negative, OK? This is negative magnitude z squared, OK? And so it's a little tricky. I think I can erase this stuff. And so we get this whole quantity in here is ut prime. The negative, so it's actually the negative of the scalar product divided by the magnitude. Okay, and now let's work that out. Okay, so this is ux, no, ux, ux comma ut, and this is v comma 1. So we're getting it minus, and then that's v ux minus 1 times ut. So again, I just totally spaced the, the, the minus from the, coming from the Minkowski scalar product. Then divided by the magnitude, that's still gamma. One over one minus v squared. Oh, you can't really see that. Okay, times one over root one minus v squared. My camera has shifted, I guess. Okay, so that's in the denominator. Um, I hope you could see the rest, the, the other part before. Um, and then this minus flips these guys. Okay. And um, so, in the end, what you get. I guess I'll erase the picture. Give some room. What you get is that u x prime u t prime equals gamma 1 minus v minus v 1 ux ut. And so that minus came from the, the minus that's inherent in the minkowski taylor product. And then it was going to look like we were going to get a, a, a v and a minus 1 from the Minkowski scalar product again, except that we had to be really careful about what projections mean and what components mean, something I wasn't have to, had to, didn't have to be careful about before. Um, and so it actually ends up with just minus v's. So one reason I, I didn't see this mistake is that um, switch, as I said in the annotation in the, in the other parts, v goes to minus v just means change the direction of motion. Or another way to say it, is I claim the inverse. If you take this L phi and you take the inverse matrix, that should just be L sub minus phi. If you know how to change coordinates for something that's coming towards you with this speed phi, then the um, opposite of that, changing coordinates in the other direction, is going to be just uh, the opposite velocity. Uh, it's very similar to when you rotate by theta, the inverse matrix of that is just rotate by minus theta. Um, and so I didn't really notice. The other reason I didn't notice is that there's a subtle issue of active versus passive uh, transformations. And when I originally wrote these notes, I actually wrote it in the form of active transformations, taking a vector and actually physically rotating it, for example, in the Euclidean case, as opposed to taking a fixed vector and expressing it in two coordinate systems, one of which is rotated. So here, the, the coordinate system is fixed, and the, the actual geometric object is being moved. Here, the geometric object is fixed, and the coordinates are being rotated. They're both useful, and they turn out to be inverses of each other. And therefore, the signs uh, were opposite from what I was getting. Now, in the, the um, the cosh alpha cinch alpha story, it's basically the same thing. The mistake kind of replicates itself. And so what we should have been getting is really cosh alpha minus cinch alpha minus cinch alpha cosh alpha. And cinch is an odd function. Cosh is an even function. So it's the same as if you just put a minus everywhere on the alphas. And so that's why you don't have to worry too much in video 16 about this mistake, because the link, if these are plus, these should be plus. If these are minus, these should be minus. The link is still the same. And in particular, it's still quite true that v should be tangent alpha. No minus there, definitely. Okay.